The conventional view of the settling pattern of East Polynesia is that around 1000 CE, East Polynesia was settled directly from West Polynesia, which comprises the Tonga Samoa area. However, an alternative view, known as the Northern Outliers East Polynesian Hypothesis, proposes the Northern Polynesian Outliers, especially the Central Northern Outliers, to be the homeland from which East Polynesia was settled. Guahu Sipulet, and we will explore this alternative homeland hypothesis for East Polynesia. The evidence for the Northern Outliers East Polynesian hypothesis is primarily based on linguistics. Linguist William Wilson, the biggest proponent of the Northern Outliers East Polynesian hypothesis, points out that the languages of East Polynesia are noticeably different from the languages of West Polynesia. If the conventional view that East Polynesia was settled directly from the Tonga Samoa area is true, then why are these languages so different? To Wilson, the answer is because East Polynesia was not settled from West Polynesia, but rather from another area where the languages are more similar. That area is the Northern Polynesian Outliers. Polynesian outliers are island societies that are culturally and linguistically Polynesian while geographically located outside the Polynesian Triangle. The northern Polynesian outliers are located to the north of the Solomon Islands. Of particular interest are the Polynesian central northern outliers of Luangiwa, Nukumanu, Taku, and Nukeria. It is these islands that Wilson argues is the likely ancestral homeland of East Polynesia because the languages of East Polynesia are linguistically similar to the languages of the Northern Polynesian outliers. More specifically, the ancestral language of East Polynesia, known as Proto-East Polynesian, descends from Proto-Central Northern Outlier East Polynesian, whose homeland was in the central northern outliers. The linguistic evidence is the shared list of some 200 lexical and grammatical innovations between northern outlier and East Polynesian, which languages in the Tonga Samoa area do not share. For example, Samoan does not share certain irregular phonological innovations, including additions and deletions that are shared by Northern Outlier and East Polynesian. Wilson also addressed the alternative possibilities that the source for the shared innovations were due to either borrowing between Northern Outlier and East Polynesian languages, or a bifurcated settlement scenario from another source in West Polynesia meaning people somewhere from West Polynesia settled both the outliers and East Polynesia around the same time, which may explain why Northern Outlier and East Polynesian are similar because they both originated from the same source. However, these alternative explanations do not fully match with the linguistic evidence. According to Wilson, neither borrowing nor bifurcated settlements from some location in central West Polynesia provides an adequate alternative to the Northern Outliers East Polynesian hypothesis to explain the over 200 distinctive innovations shared by Northern Outliers and East Polynesian languages. Wilson argues that at present, there is no body of linguistic evidence for any other hypothesis regarding the immediate origins of the East Polynesian speaking peoples anywhere as extensive as that supporting the Northern Outliers East Polynesian hypothesis. There is not only linguistic evidence linking the Northern Outliers to East Polynesia, but ethnographic evidence as well. It is well documented that there are numerous cultural differences between West and East Polynesia. For example, items such as ruvidus fish hooks, stone or wooden food pounders, and human-shaped carvings out of stone or wood are commonly found in East Polynesia but are notably absent or extremely rare in West Polynesia. 
While items such as these distinguish East and West Polynesia, these items are regularly found in the Northern Outliers, thus linking the Northern Outliers to East Polynesia. There seems to be genetic evidence as well. With one genetic study linking the people of the Leeward Islands in East Polynesia closer to the Central Northern Outliers than to the Western Polynesian islands of Tonga and Samoa. Thus, in Wilson's scenario of the sediment pattern of East Polynesia, proto-Central Northern Outlier East Polynesian speakers journeyed from the Central Northern Outliers to the Southern Phoenix Islands. It is here that proto-Central Northern Outlier East Polynesian developed into proto-East Polynesian. From the Southern Phoenix Islands, Proto-East Polynesian speakers expanded eastward, reaching the Line Islands and the volcanic Marquesas Islands. From these areas, Proto-East Polynesian speakers rapidly dispersed into the rest of East Polynesia. If we accept this settlement scenario that East Polynesia was ultimately settled from the Northern Outliers, then what is the source for the Northern Outlier languages? To Wilson, the source is most likely from the Polynesian outliers in the Southeast Solomons. In conclusion, according to Wilson, the Northern Outliers East Polynesian hypothesis aligns with the recent consensus among archaeologists that East Polynesia was settled quite late in history relative to the settlement of Central Western Polynesia. Furthermore, it provides a means for the many innovations distinguishing East Polynesian languages from those of Central Western Polynesia to develop before a rapid dispersal of East Polynesian languages not long after initial colonization of East Polynesia. If you liked and enjoyed the video, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to produce more Pacific Studies content. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, follow me on social media, and a special seduce Masi to Patreon supporters Petit Un and Pimlim Tiaku. Seduce Masi for watching, Guahusi Pulen, and Pulen has spoken. Esta.